The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorf. Every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. As a serious prototyping engineer, I find machines to be invaluable in having many design options, creating professional looking products, and quickly building new revisions. But many of you just want to create a cool case for a project and don't have access to CNC mills, laser cutters, or 3D printers. So today, I'll show you how to build a custom case by hand. This was actually a topic covered by the book I wrote back in 2004 called Hacking Video Game Consoles. The project files are still available online, and I'll be using one of them today as an example. But first, the news. Today in bed news, I'd like to show you this new Raspberry Pi laptop I'm working on. It has a larger screen, seven inch touch screen, with this cool etched bezel. And the idea is the client wants it to look like one of these old kids educational toys, like the whiz kid here. So we'll put the keyboard in front, screen will be here as you see, and in the back we'll put the Raspberry Pi and all the jacks. The old 80s computers had this a lot, this rear back portion. So hopefully we'll be able to show this to you on an upcoming episode. So this is the file I actually used to design one of the Atari portables from my book. So this is the, you know, the design view, what I used in order to lay it out and has its uh, uh, two-dimensional side view as well as so you can see the depth of all the components. What we're interested in is the template view, which is down here. Now, how this works is you print these out and then you manually cut the template onto some uh, engraving plastic. When you print things, it'll be full size. And there's also an inner template which shows you where to put the screw mounts. So here's how, the, how it works. Basically, if you select something, copy it, then you make a new document, which is the size of you know a page, a letter size, eight and a half by 11. Paste your object inside of it. As long as it fits within the page, the printer will print it out actual full scale. So you can use it as a reference template to make case parts. Okay, there are two base templates. Let's take them in the other room and slice them up. Let's look over the parts we're going to use to do this. We have a piece of uh, black and gold engraving plastic. You can get this from a trophy supply shop or online. Got uh, some right angle cutters, needle nose pliers, uh, tap. We can use this to make uh, threaded screw holes in our case. Scissors to cut up the template. Scotch tape to hold down the template. Exacto knife to cut the template. Pliers to hold some of our spacers, our nylon spacers from the hardware store. And of course, a glue gun. The first step is we're going to cut off the paper pattern on two sides here, so it matches up the machine edges of this plastic. Why do something that's already been done? All right, I've cut out kind of a slot here so we can tape it down better. Now that we have our two edges cut, we can line the pattern up to the edge of the plastic so there's less for us to actually cut. And the reason I cut that well, so we can tape the pattern down close to the edges of where we're actually going to be cutting. Now the pattern can't move. I'm going to put some more tape on it so it really can't move. I'm also going to put some tape around the edges here. So with this engraving plastic, we don't need to cut all the way through it. We just need to score it and then we can snap it in half. So the main thing we're doing here is we're scoring it, transferring this image onto this plastic manually. So I'm going to start with the inside thing, such as this cartridge slot. Now again, it's not about cutting deep, it's just about making an accurate mark. So I'm dragging my knife across here and here. The well, first cut doesn't have to be the deepest. Don't believe what Cheryl Crow and Don Henley say. Oh, or was it Kid Rock? No. What's the difference? Okay, now that we have that one scored, we can remove it and then add some more tape. It's all about reference points. Now we're going to repeat that for all the other shapes on the front of it. 
When you're cutting with an X-Acto knife, uh, always be sure that you're not putting your fingers in the path of the X-Acto knife. So if you should do like a sudden move like whoosh, that, you're not doing it over your fingers, you're doing it into the air. Because you can get yourself pretty good with an X-Acto knife. This D-pad that I'm cutting out, uh, it just uses a Nintendo controller D-pad since it's a lot easier just to take apart an old Nintendo controller than to custom hand cut our own D-pad. Now that we've made all the marks, we can pull off the pattern and reveal our etching. Just make sure you've made all the marks first. What I'm gonna do next is go over all the grooves with my X-Acto knife and make it about two or three passes deep. Then I'll be able to break it apart. I finished scoring the lines. Now I'm going to use my drill, which is another useful tool I forgot to mention because I just take it for granted. And I'm going to make drill holes inside of all these marks so I have a way to wedge out the plastic. So I'm just gonna make a hole inside each one. This basically, this basically gives me like a way to wedge in a tool. These larger ones, I'll make two of them in the corners. You know, long ago, back when I was a baby, I built lots of stuff by hand. So really, when I got older and then the machines were around, it's like, oh, this is a great way to do it. This is a better way to do it. But doing, making stuff manually was always like the base of my knowledge. I had the Legos. Oh no, I didn't have Legos. I had uh, lock blocks because we couldn't afford Legos. But I did have a real erector set. That was fun. And of course, Lincoln Logs. I didn't really care for the Lincoln Logs as much because all you could really build with them was like houses and I didn't care because I was like five. You know, when I was five, I didn't want to like, I didn't want to build a house. I wanted to make like a robot or something, or I guess it would be a transformer. The real transformers, not the ones Michael Bay does. All right. Now I'm going to use these needle nose pliers to reach up through the screw hole and bite out the plastic, so to speak. And it'll make a clean break where we scored it. See that? So you want to like go in, in and down from where you made your mark. There you go. And we'll come back and trim it with a knife. Nope. Watch my fingers. You don't need any more blood on the bent head show. I finished cutting out all the holes by hand using the pliers, a drill, and an X-Acto knife. So now we're going to place it face down and use this paper pattern in order to position the screw mounts. Now what I did with this design was to make markings for all the screw post positions. These are nylon spacers that are meant to go over a size 4 screw, so a size 4 screw slides in and out of them, which means the next size up is a size six screw, uh, English. So what we do is we take this um, tap and we tap this out so it has threads in it. Therefore, a size six screw will thread into it, just like it would in a normal case. What I'm gonna do next is cut out all these circles. These circles are a quarter inch wide so they will help us position our nylon spacers. So once the circle is cut out, we can pull it out, and then we can put our threaded nylon spacer right there, and therefore it's accurately positioned. With the posts glued in place, we can now remove our paper pattern. We want to reinforce the posts a little bit more, but we'll do that later. Super glue will hold them just fine for now. 
And see what we've done is we've used the computer to make a pattern so we can place the holes exactly where we designed them on our two-dimensional drawing program. And remember, you can get programs such as Inkscape for free. They're open source. Or you might choose to use Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. Get dev kits fast. Element 14, your dev kit HQ. Now it's time to give this unit some structure. And I'm going to use this 1 16th inch aluminum that I got at the hardware store. And what we're gonna do is bend it around the unit to create the wall. Now we don't wanna bend it on the unit because when you bend metal, you actually have to bend it further than you want because it springs back. So I'm gonna just start by making some marks here for the metal, bending it elsewhere, then bringing it back in place. Like Beckham. <laughs> Not too shabby. When you're doing things by hand, it might not always fit. Of course, that happens with the CNC machine too, so I'm just gonna use the vise here to kind of flatten out this piece, and then it should work. I'm gonna actually bend it a little further than it needs to be, like I mentioned before, because when you bend metal, it has memory and it tends to go back. You're getting pretty close with that. A little bit more and this will be nice and flush. Now to make the bottom curve, I'm going to bend the metal around something that is a similar diameter to the corner. That curve uh, worked pretty good on the first try. So what I'm going to do now is make a mark here at the center point so we know where to cut the pieces and have them join up. We put the joint at the bottom of the unit, the least likely place you'll see it. Now we're gonna bend this over, and then I got a little bit more to go, but I'm gonna make a general mark here. I'm gonna bend it a little bit more manually using my favorite pliers. Make a mark of where to manually bend it some more. At this point, we can mark off where we're gonna cut this. Looks like it's coming together nicely. Seams are pretty accurate. The curves follow pretty well. This needs a little bit more love, but yeah, it's coming along. This is looking pretty close, so I'm gonna start gluing it. Uh, again, I'm gonna use super glue basically just to keep it in place, and then I'll come back later and use something uh, stronger and thicker in order to really hold it down. So super glue basically just sets it. We don't want to use too much, otherwise it'll uh, seep through to the front surface of the unit and that would be bad. So you want just enough to get under the metal. Now I'm just going to stand here for a while. Staring contest. Now I'm hot gluing all the corners to give it added support and I'm also adding extra glue around the shafts so they won't break loose when you put screws into them. Now we're going to make the back plate of the unit. I made a new template. This one has the screws that will match up with the posts that we installed. So I'll get this cut of the black plastic and then we can drill the holes and put it in place. This side's a lot easier because we can simply drill the holes instead of having to pop out square shapes and other weird stuff. I've got my rear plate cut and I drilled the holes to match up to the posts that we put into the front of the unit. So when I put this together, it should line up. You can kind of feel if the screws are lining up or not. There we go. That's why it was important to use a paper pattern to place the um, posts because aligning the screw holes is very important. All right, looks like it's all lined up. Yep. And then I put all that hot glue around the, the screw post so um, the pressure of you know, screwing it in wouldn't cause it to um, rotate and shear off. 
So in our previous episode, we shared design tips and tricks. One of them being, you should always make sure your project works before you put it into an enclosure. So I would just like to remind you of that here. Uh, for example, if you spend all the time to make a custom enclosure by hand, and then it doesn't fit because maybe you need to add something to your project guts in order to make it work, then your case doesn't work anymore. And you're like, oh man, I spent all that time making the case and I have to remake it. So make your project work first, then make a custom case. Yeah, I mean, it's not super perfect, but it's certainly an enclosure that's in three dimensions with metal sides. Look at how tough it is. Another great way you can prototype with these is to use just regular uh, perf board with PCB holes drilled in it. And then you can arrange things like buttons in a pattern and have it line up to your holes and be spaced by these inner risers that we also designed using our paper pattern. And then when you bolt it together, your switches will be in the proper place for gameplay. So there you have it. I made a case using only my printer and my hands. Hopefully this gives you the inspiration to try these hacks yourself and make a cool custom enclosure for your next project. Today's viewer question comes from Adam who asks, my friend and I are both into pinball and would like a list of components for building one. My suggestion is to download an existing pinball manual from either Stern or Williams that will show you all the parts that go into a machine. Then you can buy the parts at a place like pinballlife.com or bayareaamusements.com. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll start working on a quadcopter. We've made a lot of cool stuff on the show before, but never anything that can fly. So we're heading to the moon, or at least the stratosphere, or maybe more like 10 feet off the ground. Either way, we're going to try to get airborne. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>